What's going on, guys? We are here in Ottawa for week one of the VNL. We are here with head coach of the USA men's national team, Mr. John Spra, and first and foremost, Coach Spra, congratulations on your NCAA championship. Is it is it good to finally have that first win with UCLA and uh, you know off your back and, and under your belt? Fantastic. Always great to win. Incredible group of guys. Really just a, a phenomenal season looking back at how consistent we were through the whole way, but Yes, it is great to get that first win. Does that does that bring any special energy for you coming into the gym with the Team USA guys coming right off a championship with you, UCLA, or do you kind of compartmentalize those two teams? I, I think in general compartmentalize. Here you work with players for years. It's not just the four-year period of a, an undergraduate degree. I've been coaching Matt Anderson. I, I don't know how long, long time. So when you come back, it's a little bit more like a reunion. So the energy is always there for me because I enjoy coaching this team so much and have had long-term good relationships with a lot of these guys. Is there a transition period for you from NCAA to international ball? There is, uh, I think in a, a few different ways. One is it's nice to have at least a little bit of downshift. So I took a week, had a slow roll the second week. Uh, and of course, there's also the different job tasks, tasks, which is how do you coordinate a group of guys that have spread out, played on a bunch of different teams, and now they're trying to come back and connect again. And, and what does that look like from a training perspective? How do you do that? And that's a really specific skill set. So I think that's where you got to dial that mindset in about how you build the team. Awesome. Now, on to VNL, week one here in Ottawa. Uh, last year, you guys sent maybe kind of a B team to week one in, in Brazil. This year, you have all the guys here. Uh, what was the change in strategy to bring the, you know, the top guys to week one right away? A little bit is, is randomness, just who's healthy, what their league schedule was overseas. I also think it's hard not to look at the Olympic qualification process and how world ranking is so impacted by many of these matches and not think to yourself, gosh, we got to do everything we can to get going as early as possible. So that's certainly a mindset that we've discussed as a group, and I think the guys are aware of that. How important is, is that to make sure that the VNL is good? Because this is a massive year with the VNL, Continental Championships, and the Olympic qualifiers. How important is that to make sure that you know every, every match is a quality match? It's not hard to sell these guys on that, much because of what we just talked about. But I think last year we had guys that had took a little time off, which is very common in the terms of the way that we've run it here after an Olympic year. Give some of the veterans some time off, particularly during this first tournament. This year, though, it's year two. You're, you are thinking about the summer that you referred to. It's a big summer. I think guys are excited to get going. What are you looking forward to? And what are you looking forward to seeing from your team here in week one of VNL? just to see how we can get connected. I, I, there's a lot of unknowns about how we're going to play, I think, <laughs> and who we're going to play and how are they going to play. It's just how are we implementing systems? How are we getting connected? How can we get better at every match? Now, the USA traditionally doesn't necessarily go outside of America for coaches, but you have the legend Javier Weber uh, on the bench with you. What's it like having, you know, uh, someone like him who knows the game so well on the bench with you kind of not only on the bench, but in, in and out of practices as well? Javi and I have known each other for a long time. So we've had a dialogue that goes back probably 15 years. So we've had a friendship and it's good and it's comfortable. I personally love trying to go outside and just see different perspectives. How can I learn as a head coach by bringing in people who see the game a little differently? It's always been something that's of interest to me. Obviously my time internationally has given me the opportunity to do that, but to work day to day with Javi has been phenomenal. Is that something you just kind of give him the green light to, you know, talk to the guys as he pleases? And, you know, is he there uh, working within your own system or is he trying to, you know, make some changes w with what he sees as well? I think it's a dialogue and a collaborative decision about what we're going to do. He's very deferential in terms of how he handles himself. There's a lot of respect. I think culturally, too, and, and now you can see this. Because when you're overseas, how they run typically, and I, this is maybe a broad generalization, but typically the head coach does the, the most of the talking. And that's not necessarily the way I run programs. I have give my assistants a lot of latitude in terms of how they communicate to the team. But Javi, like I mentioned, is comes to me and says, hey, I see this, and I, I'm thinking this. What do you think? I'll, I'll, we'll discuss it, and, then he'll, and I'll say, hey, go tell the team. And he goes, you want me to tell the team? And I'll say, yes, go tell the team. And so he jumps in and tells the team. And so we run that probably a little differently. It's differently than he's used to, but he has a, a lot of say here, as does Matt Furbringer. And, and so we, we just have a lot of really quality coaches here in the gym, and I give them a lot of freedom to go say what they, what they know, which is a lot. Yeah, Matty Ferb's another legend there. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, I actually remember you doing a, an interview when you first started with UCLA about how Al Skates used to come to your practices. And it sounds like it was very similar to that, where he would kind of just come back to you with what you're seeing. You're like, just no, just go run with it. 
Uh, listen, Skates was a legend in so many ways, and I learned so much from him. But one of the things that he was phenomenal about is just being able to take in information, listen to his assistants, process it, and really respect it. He always valued our voice and what our input was, and oftentimes just took it verbatim. It's <laughs> just, you see this? Okay, let's do this. And so there was this humility there. There was this willingness to, to listen to other perspectives that I've always appreciated and learned a lot from. Now, finally, for this week, uh, we mentioned roster. You guys got you, all your guys here, very a lot of depth. Are we going to see you kind of tinker with the roster a little bit and get some different guys in and, and see some different lineups within the, within the 14 that you have available? I think you almost have to with this format. Four matches over five days, you're, you're not going to play all your guys all the time. Maybe a little bit later. I mean, we have the Olympic qualifier coming up at the end when you're going to probably do that. But I think at this point, you're probably not blowing guys out early, so you will see a variety of different lineups. Awesome. Well, Coach, best of luck. Thank I know you, you guys don't get started for a couple of days, so yeah. in, in, enjoy the city, enjoy the training, and best of luck this week, except on Saturday. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm Canadian. Of so course, of course. We're friends up until, up until that day. Awesome. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot, Coach. Okay. Appreciate it.